unknown to Peter. Cecil is a thousand miles away. He's selling Peter's energy saver, Cecil style. Whining, dining, and wenching. Jimmy, a renowned army officer turned business mogul, is one of the most connected men in Guangdong, a province of a hundred million people. Jimmy likes the product, and Cecil knows that with Jimmy's backing, massive orders are guaranteed. Jimmy seals the deal by taking up the microphone. As Vance's gruelling tour draws to an end, he feels he finally understands how to do business in China. High risk, high rewards, as long as you know what you're doing. And, you know, a few million quid later, I know what I'm doing, the most expensive education there's been. But I've paid my entry fee now, I'm in, and I'm staying. So it's hopefully all earnings from here. Fuck off, Mr. Fucking Abdul. Please, fucking help me. Every day is still a battle. But overall, he's now winning the war. His giant factory on the North Korean border is finally complete and churning out 15,000 kitchen cabinets a week. And the money is rolling in. Dirty cash I want, yeah. Dirty cash. Dirty cash I need, yeah. He's also exploiting China's newfound wealth by opening up his first showroom, selling his unique British kitchens back to the Chinese. They're buying a, a product that's designed in Europe, a, a product that's sold by an Englishman, but none of it's ever seen England. For Vance and his fake Olympic bus, no corner of China is off limits in his endless quest for bargains. <laughs> in a Mongolia now, pal. Three days away. Why is that? Uh, cheap forest, 6,000 acre forest, oak forest for sale. Can't resist, mate. It's cheap. Very cheap. A lot of kitchen doors there. Good luck, Paul. Take care, pal, yeah? See you later, pal. For Vance, China has always been about more than just making money. It's a vast playground for his never-ending adventures. Peter's trust in Cecil has paid off. 
Cecil has phoned him with news of his big deal. So Peter takes his wife Mary out to celebrate. Now to have this uh, big breakthrough, which we've seen today, uh, means that over the next two years, uh, we will succeed more than I ever thought. How do you feel about that? Well, you've got to make a copper or two. Huh? You've got to make a copper or two. I feel good. Anticipating huge profits, Peter pays a factory to start producing his energy-saving device. And he's eager to witness the first one being installed. Peter has already started enjoying the good life. But his hardest Chinese challenge is yet to come. Getting paid. Tony's arrived in New York, hoping to secure the cushion deal of his life. Go on, happy Valentine's Day. Oh, yeah, 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 girl, that's great, thank you. He sponsored a party for the movers and shakers of America's billion dollar cushion industry. How do you do, I'm Tony Caldera, pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's amazing what's going on in China, isn't it? Oh, it's incredible. Unbelievable. Do you do decorative pillows yourself, or? Yeah, well, let's, let's, let's talk. Let's... Across the floor, he spots a serious player in America's cushion game. To tell you the truth, I like four of the designs you're showing me. I would like to run them in about a thousand of my stores. I'm going to need about a hundred thousand pillows per design. Per design. Correct. You now you're talking nearly three million dollars there. It's about right. It's not a problem. That's good. Let's let's do it. Great. Let's do it. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, my pleasure. I'm shocked. It's just, you know, you know, a three million dollar order. You know, it's, it's like a dream, isn't it? It's brilliant. Come to New York City and to get an order like that, you know, it's just amazing. You know, I just can't believe it. I'm just, I'm in shock. Kerching, happy days. That's fantastic. Just great. <laughs> 